Welcome to the Southern Craft Wood Shop. I'm Wes Lewis. Honeybees are one of our great natural resources. They pollinate up to a third of the world's food, not to mention the honey they produce is pretty good too. In this episode, we'll build the boxes that stack up to make a hive, as well as the jigs to cut in the handles and make two different size box joints. And I'll put a link in the description for the plans for both the boxes and the jigs. And before we begin, let's talk about safety. It's your responsibility to yourself and your loved ones to know and understand your tools. Please follow all procedures and guidelines in operating them safely. Our three quarter inch material came in 12 foot lengths, approximately 10 inches wide, and with a factory edge that's fair but could be a little bit better. I took the time to cut these down to more manageable lengths by first laying out how to get our best yield out of each board. Our deeps are gonna finish at nine and five eighths tall, but first I wanna set our rip fence at nine and three quarters, and I'll run a dust cut down one edge. After I've done that dust cut, we'll reset our fence to nine and five eighths and finish out our board. For a medium, I'll repeat basically the same steps. Now medium finishes at six and five eighths tall, but for now I want that rip to be seven inches. I'll explain more about that later. Now we're ready to do our cross cuts. I could do that with our slide cradle or I could do it with a compound sliding miter saw, but I think I'll stay with my miter gauge on the table saw. Well, for this video, I'm gonna show two construction methods, box joints and rabbit joints. For our box joints, our sides will be 19 and 7 eighths and our fronts and backs will be 16 and a quarter. For our rabbit joints, our sides change to 19 and an eighth, but the fronts and backs remain 16 and a quarter. Well, now that we have our parts cut for our boxes, it's time to set up to cut in our recess handles. For that, I'm taking a piece of scrap particle board, three quarters of an inch thick, 12 inches wide, 30 inches long. And to that, we'll add a back fence, a slide rail, and two places to clamp to the side fence of the table saw. With our jig put together, I've come over to the table saw and set up our stack dado, stacked to three quarters of an inch thick. I've set our rip fence to seven and three eighths to the outside edge. That's gonna give us two and a quarter inches from the top of our handle to the top of our box. Now I need to cut a slot in this board. From past experience, I know that my slot needs to start roughly at 14 inches. cut the handle, I'll take our panel, bump it to the back fence, keep it tight against the rip fence, and slowly drop it into our dado blade. That will remove the bulk of the material. Once that's done, I'll set up staying tight to our back fence and slowly ride down our slide rail, pushing into our rip fence. You'll remember we made our rips for our medium seven inches, but our jig is set up for nine and five eighths. The simplest solution is to take a two and five eighths rip and extend the width of your medium. It will leave a couple holes. I don't think your bees will mind, but if you do, you can always put a little putty in the hole when we get done.
We'll set up and do two different size box joints today. One's a 7 8 finger, which is a single pass on the dado. The other is an inch and 3 8 finger, which is a double pass on the dado. It'll take a different jig for each size. I'll set that up now, and I'll leave a link to a drawing in the description if you'd like to build one yourself. At the table saw, I've set our stack dado up at three quarters of an inch wide. I'm eight and a quarter from the inside of the blade back to the fence, and I'll be making a half inch deep plow. Now that dado will receive our reference peg. I'm using a piece of solid surface material, half inch thick, three quarters of an inch wide, but you could use hardwood if you don't have access to this. For our next dado, we want to move the fence out another two and three quarters of an inch. That should leave 11 inches from the inside of the blade back to the fence. It's a good idea to use a test piece to check your measurements before you make that cut on the jig itself. Once we know we have our fence in the right location, we'll bump our jig to the fence and transfer the location of the T-slots in the table saw over to our jig. Now we'll mask off everything except the area directly over our T-slots and apply spray adhesive. I'll also apply spray adhesive to two pieces of material I've pre-prepared that will fit just inside our T-slots. With the adhesive side up, I'll line up our two runners square to the fence. I'll then take our jig, keeping it pressed against the fence, and drop it down onto the runners. Through our pre-drilled holes, I'll run an inch and a quarter screw into our jig to permanently secure our runners. With our jig set up for our inch and 3 8 box joints, we're ready to start making our cuts. For our sides, we want to start with our material face out, and we'll overhang the outside edge of the jig about 5 eighths of an inch, make our first pass. Then we'll come dead flush to the outside edge of the jig to make our second pass. We'll take a piece of scrap material, square cut, butt it to the outside edge of our reference peg, slide our material over to it, make our first pass on our second notch. And then we'll butt the inside edge of our reference peg for our second pass. From that point on, we'll use the outside edge of our reference peg for our first pass inside for our second pass, outside for our first pass, inside for our second pass. For our fronts and backs, we'll take a 5 8 spacer, bump it to the peg, and make our first pass. And then we will bump our panel all the way to the reference peg for our second pass. Then we'll bump to the outside edge, inside edge, and repeat. Our jig for our 7 8 inch box joint will be very similar to our inch and 3 8 jig with a few dimensional changes. Our first dado cut that'll hold our 7 8 reference peg will be 8 and 5 8 from the inside edge of the blade back to the fence. Then we'll shift the fence over an inch and 3 quarters to make our second pass. And you'll be able to find all of these dimensions in the drawings and I'll be sure to leave that link in the description. If you'll remember when we were cutting our parts for our mediums, we made them 7 inches instead of 6 and 5 eighths. That's because it'll make things easier while we're doing our box joints. Once we're done, we'll come back and we will rip it down to 6 and 5 eighths, taking the extra material off the bottom. Now if you do use this method to cut box joints for your mediums, on your ends you'll use a 7 8 spacer, 
with the top toward the fence to make your first pass. Then after that, you'll just butt to your reference peg. On your flip side, you will not use the spacer. When you do your sides with the top facing the fence, you will not use the spacer for the first cut. Continue along with your reference peg. When you flip it over and the top is facing away from your fence, you will come back and use your spacer for the first cut in five eighths. We'll take that waste off the bottom edge of the board. We'll need a three eighths by five eighths rabbit on the top edge of our fronts and backs to receive our frames. I can do that with the dado blade on our seven eighths inch box joint construction and for our rabbit joint construction. But for our inch and three eighths box joint, I'll do that with a router mounted under the table. I've set up a sacrificial fence with a bump stop on both ends. That'll stop our cut three quarters of an inch from the end of both ends of our board. For the box we're putting together with rabbit joint construction, we'll run a three quarter inch wide, three eighths inch deep rabbit along the end grain of the front and back pieces. I've adjusted our fence over from three quarters to five eighths and we'll use that setup to get our frame rest in the tops of our fronts and backs for our seven eighths box joint construction deep, our seven eighths box joint construction medium, and our rabbit joint construction. We have two different construction methods, rabbit joints and box joints. In the box joints, we have two different sizes, inch and three eighths and seven eighths. The assembly method will be slightly different for all three. We'll start with the rabbit joint first. We'll use a combination of exterior wood glue, staples, and screws to hold our rabbit joints together. I want to start by making a line 3 eighths of an inch in on both sides of my fronts and backs. And then we'll pre-drill. We'll start about an inch and a half in on both ends. And one dead center. I want to use an ample amount of glue on both the shoulder and the flat on the inside. And I'll go ahead and run a string down the edge as well. You're going to have quite a bit of squeeze out. That's a good thing. That'll give you 100% coverage. Now I'll tack it a few times with the staples and we'll use an inch and five eighths exterior wood screw and we'll finish up with a wet rag. check it for square before we set it to the side to dry. Next we'll assemble our inch and 3 eighths box joints. We'll use a lot of glue and 2 inch screws to hold those together. We'll start by giving ourselves a mark at 3 eighths of an inch in and we'll pre-drill for all of our screws. Our camera failed to record us putting our first two joints together. What you missed was an awful lot of glue and a fair amount of screws. I want to make sure we get really good glue coverage on all our points that will be in contact on the joint. 
and this being the last side to go on, we have to do both sides at the same time. You cannot use too much glue. Set this to the side and we'll work on our fronts and backs. a good time to mention pay attention to your handles make sure they are all facing the same direction Let's remove your excess glue with the damp rag it's a good idea to keep a pail of water handy Just like our rabbit joint box, we want to check for square before we set it aside to dry. The assembly of our 7 8 box joints will be much like our inch and 3 8 We'll use a lot of glue, but only four screws per corner. We'll use inch and a half staples for the rest. For our fronts and backs, I want to pre-drill our top and bottom finger on both ends. And for our sides, I want to pre-drill the second finger from the top and the second finger from the bottom. Now we're ready to add our glue. You'll notice I'm not shooting the top. That's because if we do, it'll run into our frame rest. And for our last joint, we'll do all of our glue up at once. Now we'll assemble our medium just like we did our last boot. Well there you go, two different construction methods as well as two different size box joints. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Our next video will be building bottoms, lids, and inner covers. If you'd like more information on beekeeping, I'll put some links to some great channels in the description. Thanks for watching.